Hi, Nick from Patchworks here, and today I'll be talking about using a switch in Eurorack. Uh, today I'll actually be going over specifically using the Select by WMD, but what I talk about today can also be applied to the Acid Rain Technology Switchblade, some of the switches that you find on the Dopefer line, or really any sort of voltage-controlled switch that allows you to take inputs or outputs and sw swap between them using control voltage. Um, specifically what I'm talking about today is that we have PLATS, which is a great macro oscillator, and it has two outputs. We have the OUT, which is going to be your main mode, and the auxiliary, which is sometimes an alternative mode. Like, for example, in chord mode, we have the main chords, and then the root note actually comes out of the AUX. Um, sometimes with some of the drum sounds, we get different emulations out of the OUT and AUX, and we could use a switch to switch between the two and do some cool things when we actually control that with voltage. But even if we're not controlling with, with voltage, it's just nice to use a switch to switch between the two to audition it or even switch between it in a song. So as you can see here, I took my outputs and just ran them into A and B on the select. And I'll take my output and just run that to the mixer. And we'll hear just me manually mix between the two. So that's our A and that's our B. And as I described before, the difference is between the chord mode and a root note. Go to other modes, two different formatants, two different oscillator sounds, two different FM stuff. So it's pretty easy for me to check this out without having to run both into a mixer and just do that manually. But the nice thing is that we actually have the CV input that we can automate that and use that as a tool of sound design and create motion, which is why I like to use your rack is to use modulation to create that motion. In this next part, I'll be using the math to switch between the two and then fit it into the actual, you know, how we use the envelope to modulate the amplitude that'll be synchronized using switching. So I'll do a quick rundown of maths and what we'll use here. Um, type, uh, so maths is an envelope generator and that's what I'll be using for it today, but it can also act as an LFO voltage mixer. We have two channels here and I'll be using channel one. So when I hit cycle, we'll start the looping and you can see our envelope right there, our LFO. And the amount of time that we're on the rise and fall are controlled by these knobs. You can see it when it's rising, you can see that this LED here is not lit. This is the end of rise gate out. So when it's rising, we don't have a signal and when it's falling, then the gate will always be lit. And I'll be using this as my signal into the select to switch between the two channels. And these knobs will give me the ability to change how frequently that happens. So when I patch CV from the select over to the end of rise and turn my mixer, you'll hear that it's just switching between the chord and not chord mode as if I'm just doing this automatically, but Matt's is actually doing it. And if I change this, we could go slower or a lot faster. And this will actually accept audio rate control voltage. So we'll, you can hear now, it's actually very fast and we're getting harmonics introduced by the frequency that this is running at, which is actually pretty cool. If you run it to something like the uh, 10H3 or some distortion, you get some really nice gnarly timbres just by switching between two different waveforms. But I actually want to keep it a little bit mellow. So let's have it just switch between the two. There we go. Now, this isn't very musical. It seems kind of arbitrary when it's switching between the two. But the nice thing is that we're using maths and we do have an envelope. And that relationship that I described to you, where we have it not going on the rise and then on the fall it switches, we can just patch our envelope into Platz's level. And now the relationship is very apparent. On the rise, you can hear that we have the chords Let's make that a little bit longer. And then as we come down, we only get that root note. Or I can invert it by flipping the switch. So now we'll get the root note. And then on the, on the uh, fall, we'll get chords. And so that's kind of musical. It's a lot more musical than just trying to use both and arbitrarily switch them between them. And then we can also kind of get this going on its own rhythmic meter besides everything else since it's just looping. So one little other thing I like to do, because we are using maths, right now it's always just ticking across. Um, I'd like to use the other channel as modulation. So I took the output of our, actually for this one, I could just go out four. 
which is our second envelope. And I'll start looping that. We'll have that looping, and I'll run it into both here. And as we turn this up, you can hear that should start. Let me kind of get this dialed in. So you can hear now that it's switching. It'll go fast and then slower. So it kind of swells and then we're adding motion to the switching now. Let's dull this a bit. Maybe slow it down just a little bit. So now we have kind of something that's using a switch moving between two timbres and we're getting a lot of motion just out of maths. But this is still a pretty clean sound and usually what I'd like to do is run this through something like the Herb or the Monsoon. Um, but hey, we're using a switch so why not both? Can't I take this output and switch between the Herb and the Monsoon so we could also have another kind of... Uh, another source of movement, but actually the movement is routing through effects. So in this next part, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so one thing I actually kind of wanted to go over too is that you can hear that when we're switching between the two, that there's a bit of clicking going on and that's, that's actually to be expected. We're using audio and when we switch between two sources, there sometimes is like a, like a sharp cutoff. So in this next example, before I actually run it to these effects, I've already set up my filters to kind of alleviate a bit of that problem. But again, this is experimental sound design, so pops are okay, we can process it out later, or we could actually accentuate it to be part of the process. Um, but, you know, I want to filter it out, I want to make something that sounds kind of lush and beautiful. So I'll take my output here, just completely move that patch cable, because I'm going to take this and run it into channel 2. It says in out. Right now we've been mostly tra uh, treating these as outputs, but they are also inputs and then route between A and B. So when I put that into the out, I'll take channel A, run it into the filthy, which is a filter, and already we can hear it going through the monsoon. And you can hear, as I close that, that does remove some of the popping that we were hearing before. Um, but my channel B, oh, one thing to also note here is that our CV is normal. So when this is switching, it actually will automatically normal down to this. So it's actually not always going to the monsoon. As soon as I plug in a cable here and then switch this over, it will completely cut it. So that's just one caveat of working with this, but it's cool because it does kind of cast decay down. Um, so I'll just leave this dummy cable until I figure out what I want to patch it to. And then I'll take my other output, which is actually live right now, and plug it into the Polaris, which is going into the Herb Verb. And this is running as a high pass. Set it up so we can really tell the difference when we switch. If we have too low pass and too kind of beautiful sounding, reverbish, granular synth type effects, they can kind of blend together, which again could be an objective of yours. But I'll turn this all the way up and plug this in. And you can start hearing it come through. And with this one, you can really hear it um, accentuating those clicks. So I'll actually just put it back to low pass to filter some of that out. Maybe slow that down a little bit. Okay, cool. So now, switching between this, that's my monsoon. Switching over, or verb. We'll have the herb verb ring out a little bit more. Monsoon, herb verb, juice it a little bit here. Maybe make it sound a little bit brighter. There we go. Excellent. Okay. So now let's automate it. Let's switch between the two. I could, uh, if I really wanted to, I could actually patch it over here to the other maths gate to keep everything related, but I just want to use an unsynchronized LFO, so I'll use it off the peak. And then we have a square wave coming here. That's our rate, and once I plug this in, I'll start going. Look at that. It sounds beautiful. Like, already we have, like, so many different rhythms going on. Like, this could be just as easy as running this into a sampler, sampling it, recon, like constituting it or you're just putting a beat behind it. Slow it down a little bit. 
filter a little bit there. And just one little other bit of motion. I like to uh, sweep this on plats. This is my dozen versions. So when I sweep that with my other LFO, we kind of get another source of movement. And now it's just kind of playing itself. Like we were able to go in and kind of play around, you know, it's very hands-on, but using the switch, we have something that sounds kind of tapish, sounds kind of lo-fi, but it's really crystal clear because we're using control voltage and different signals to get that sound. Um, yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. We, and this isn't the only, so right now we're just using audio, but we could also use control voltage and switch between two different sequences, two different LFOs. Interesting things can happen when you are using two different uh, waveforms off of an oscillator because they are phase synchronized and switching between the two can create like a third new waveform. Kind of what we're doing with plats here, but the alternative modes are going to be a lot more intense than just two different simple waveforms. But yeah, I hope that was informative. If you have any more questions about switches or any other module ideas you'd like to go over, you can leave a comment. And if you just have any questions about your rack in general, feel free to shoot us an email at info at patchworks.com or just come into the showroom and we'd be more than happy to help you. And now I'll jam using this patch idea with a little bit of drums coming from the crater and the fracture and just kind of letting it be kind of this ambient dance, dance wash type jam. Thanks.